Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to DCS World 2.7.10 and Eagle Dynamics FA18C Hornet Module. Welcome to tutorial 9, AT Fleur Targeting Pod. We're going to take a look at the first of two targeting pods that the Hornet is capable of carrying, this one being the AT Fleur. Uh, this is normally used by uh, Hornets when they are based on carriers, which I would assume is most of the time, because this particular pod is rated for catapult launches and uh, arrested landings on the carrier, uh, with the Lightning 2 targeting pod being the other option, uh, not being uh, rated for such operations. So you see here the AT Fleur mounted on an F-18, uh, in the one location where it can be carried, which is the, the left-hand pylon, uh, sorry, left-hand fuselage station. Uh, you can see that it's mounted with this uh, aerodynamic fairing, uh, and it takes the place of one uh, of the AMRAMs that you would generally carry on these stations. So you can see here on the right-hand side, I'm carrying an AMRAM as normal, and on the left-hand station here, I have the AT Fleur. Uh, its capabilities are very similar to the Lightning II, it has a daytime camera, it has forward-looking infrared, it has laser spot search, and it also has a laser designator slash laser rangefinder. Uh, it's additionally fitted with an infrared marker as well, just like Lightning 2 is. Uh, it's capable of auto and scene acquisition modes, with auto being the same as point track on the Lightning pod, uh, and scene being the same as area on the Lightning pod. Um, there's not really that much to go through with regards to the setup of the pod uh, before we get airborne and start using it. If we look down at the sensors control panel here on the right hand console, uh, we've got power switches for the FLIR, which is the pod itself. It can be off, standby or fully on. In standby, it, it, going from off to standby takes about two minutes, during which time it will show uh, not timed out. Uh, LTD slash R is the laser target designator slash rangefinder. This can only be armed once you're in the air uh, and master arm is on. And then you've got the laser spot uh, tracker. Uh, this can be turned on at any time. So three individual power switches for controlling the different features of the pod. I'm going to get the aircraft airborne now and I will demonstrate its usage. Okay, you rejoin me in the cockpit of the Hornet. Let's get set up with the AT Fleur, and I'll then go over the display and functionality of the pod. So first things first, let's get the aircraft into air-to-ground master mode. Much of this only works once you're in air-to-ground master mode. We're going to focus down on the right-hand DDI, because that's where I'm going to display the AT Fleur. And we're going to go menu until we're in the tactical menu. And normally there would be a FLIR page up here on the top left but there isn't right now because the pod is not powered on. If we look down here at the sensors panel on the right-hand console, we want to put the FLIR switch into the middle position, which is standby. If we then return to the right DDI, you'll see that we now have the FLIR page. Let's choose FLIR, and we're then presented with the message not timed out, and the operation status at the top left is ready with a line through it. This is because the pod needs approximately two minutes in which to cool down. So, with that in mind, I'm going to accelerate time a little bit and uh, get ready to make use of the pod. Uh, I'm also going to take a little look down at the, the sense control panel as well. Uh, we're going to turn on the laser uh, uh, spot tracker and the LTD, the actual designator, you'll see that it has a solenoid held switch and it keeps flipping back to safe and that's because the master arm is not on. Okay, we can return to normal time again. The pod has now completed uh, its timeout, basically, its cool cycle, and it's now displaying standby as its current status. Let's go ahead and flip that switch now into on, and with it in on, we can see operate in the top left-hand side of the screen. Let's press sensor select switch to the right, and we now have the diamond displayed on the top, ha uh, the top right corner of the DDI. We're also now going to switch Master Arm to on. Uh, master Arm is on. That then means that we can, in fact, turn on the laser designator. And the laser will be ready to use. And that is confirmed in the top center of the display with L Arm. Uh, that's indicating to us that the, the laser is armed. 
Uh, if we double tap the nose wheel steering button, uh, we will immediately put the pod into the velocity vector slaved mode. Uh, we can see that because VVSLV is boxed. If we double tap it again, we'll go into a mode called snowplow. And in snowplow mode, the pod is uh, fixed just below the horizon facing forwards. Now, what we're going to do before proceeding any further is we're going to adjust the image settings. I'm actually going to go into setup so that I get my grayscale setting here. And let's just get this adjusted so it's a little bit easier to, to make use of because it's just kind of, it's a bit too bright for us to actually make everything out. There we go. That's much better. And then let's center down on the pod just now, come out of setup, and I'm just going to quickly go through all the symbology that you can see here in the pod. So first thing to note is that at the top center, it will tell you which... Um, which camera you're currently using. So you've got the option of TV, and you've also got the option of FLIR. You can actually click this button, it likes to say IR, click this button to flip between the two. It's also possible to switch them using the field of view button. So uh, if I push and hold field of view and release, it will go infrared. If I push and hold field of view and release again, it goes back to TV. Short taps on the field of view button will switch us through the field of view modes. So we're currently in wide field of view. I can go to medium and narrow and then back to wide. So uh, that's what that means. We then also have an indication of where the camera is pointed, currently two degrees to the right of center line. We also see the elevation displayed here. It's currently at zero degrees uh, or basically bore sighted. We have the laser status here, currently showing laser armed. Uh, and then we have reticle here as an option which we can enable and disable. So we can either have a reticle or not, uh, whatever we want there. Uh, top right hand corner we have the lat, long, elevation and grid of whatever the pod is currently looking at. Down here we have the current laser spot uh, uh, tracker code and we have the designator code. These can be adjusted using the UFC and that's accessed by pressing the UFC button. We have our aircraft's airspeed and knots and Mach number. We have our current altitude. We have the current tracking mode. It's currently an inertial tracking mode. This will normally just be either inertial, automatic, or scene modes. We can adjust manually the focus of the camera and the zoom level. Uh, and actually it confirms to us up here what zoom level we're currently using. flipping through those using the elevation controls. Uh, although that's a little bit difficult to use accurately if you're using a uh, if you're using a axis as I am. Anyway, uh, let's take a little look at the controls. Uh, we have, as I already said, the field of view controls here by pressing this push button. We can flip cameras here. We can display or hide the reticle. We have trigger mode here. In trigger mode, the laser will fire if we depress the second stage of the gun trigger, uh, which I've just done now, but it's done nothing for some reason. Uh, if we don't have trigger mode enabled, uh, the laser will automatically fire on uh, weapons release. Uh, it, it, it waits for a set period, it lets the bomb drop for a period, and then it will actually automatically engage. So this is effectively a manual or automatic mode for the laser designator. Uh, we have uh, the, uh, the velocity uh, vector slave option here. Clicking that will slave or unslave. UFC will bring up controls on the UFC for setting the designator code and the spot uh, track code. Just choose the one you want to change, enter a different code, and press enter, and it will then be confirmed on the DDI, and this works for the spot track as well. We have the setup option, which I already used there. Most of what we have in here doesn't actually work, uh, or is not implemented. Eye safe is a mode for the laser, where it is safe for people's eyes, that's not implemented. Uh, Alternate um, alignment mode uh, is selectable here. You can either use the primary or the alternate alignment modes. That's not implemented. Uh, and you can initialize alignment of the pod here as well. That's also not implemented. Um, cal, I can't remember what that does. Oh, I, yeah, actually, that's the calibration strip. So that should allow us to toggle this strip on and off. But it doesn't do anything. 
Um, and then the last one is the coordinates. This actually does work. We can display all coordinates, or just the lat long, or just the grid, or have it off, or display all. Uh, and those are the options we have here in the setup menu, and it also displays this nice calibration card. One thing to note, when you're displaying the AT Fleur uh, in one of the DDIs, it's green scale, and when you display it in the MPCD, the center display, which is full color, uh, it will display in white scale or grayscale, effectively. We have the option to declutter, and that will take away uh, the kind of the own ship information at the bottom. We can enter a laser spot track by pressing this button here, and uh, we can also adjust focus and zoom manually here. Cool. Um, what have I done? I've put it into scene, that's why it's displaying like that. Okay. And uh, you can switch uh, well, basically, using the HOTAS, you can slew the pod uh, using the TDC. So as I'm scrolling down with the TDC, actually, let's get that back into wide field of view. Uh, I can move the pod around using my TDC cursor controls. Once we're looking down at the ground, we get the yardstick. So this line here is 740 meters long at that point on the ground. Um, we're currently, as confirmed here, in inertial tracking mode. If I press the sensor select switch in the direction of the DDI, in this case to the right, I can switch it to scene mode and I get a different reticle. This reticle confirms to us that we're in scene tracking mode. This is the same as area track. And if I press to the right again, I will go into auto. And auto is a point track mode. Uh, and in, in auto mode, we will get these um, this kind of cursor. Uh, basically a, a gate, and we want to put the object that we're intending to track inside this gate. When I'm in automatic mode, I can depress the TDC, and I get a little cursor. And this is quite useful, because it means that um, normally you cannot slew uh, automatic mode. Once you're in automatic mode, it, all slewing is disabled. However, if I want to move to another target that I can see within this scene, I can simply move the cursor over it and depress the TDC. Yeah, it's actually not finding anything to lock over there, though. It's it's clearly not getting a contrast. Oh, no, it just did. Okay, so I had to press uh, sensor select to the right again. Let's try that one more time. So we've got it in auto. I depress TDC. I move the cursor somewhere else. Yes, that does actually work. So it's sensor select switch to the right after you've done that. In any case, uh, that's, that's basically what that looks like. Uh, I'm going to switch to the infrared camera and I'm going to cycle my field of view in a couple, all the way into narrow. And uh, something else that you'll notice is that we have this alignment um, thing here showing us the direction of north uh, in relation to what we're currently looking at. And then the other thing to note is we have this diamond currently displayed at the top of the, uh, the DDI. That is basically the direction the pod is looking at referenced to the aircraft. Uh, so if I look all the way down, that diamond starts moving towards the center of the screen, and as I slew to the left and to the right, the diamond is moving to the left and to the right. Other thing to note is that waypoints are displayed as triangles with a number, and uh, that's that's quite a useful um, yeah, that's quite a useful way of orienting yourself in relation to those waypoints. The other thing you can do is you can immediately slew the pod uh, to your current sensor point of interest if that is a waypoint. So looking down here at the HSI, let's select, for example, waypoint 3 and then choose waypoint designate. Once we've done that, the pod will immediately slew to waypoint 3 as it's done so. And I can hit my FOV a couple of times to zoom in there and take a little look at that particular target. Uh, whenever we're looking at uh, a target and we have something designated, usually done by depressing the TDC, we will get the range to the currently designated target as well. And as before, if I want to slew off of this target, I can depress my TDC and then I can simply move it somewhere else, depress the TDC again, and that is now my tracked point. It's currently in inertial tracking, but I could press sensor select switch to the right to do a scene track. Something else to note when we're in the infrared mode, uh, we have automatic gain here, uh, and we can turn that off and then manually adjust uh, the, the level and the gain. Uh, or alternatively, 
we can put it back into automatic. We also have the option to flip between white hot and black hot using this setting down here. And uh, once we're once we're in anything other than the wide field of view, we have the ability to use the manual zoom as well. So wide field of view only has zoom level number one. Let me actually move this somewhere where there's actually something to look at. Here we go. So uh, wide field of view has one zoom level, denoted Z1. If I flip to medium field of view, we have zoom level one and zoom level two. And that's it. If I FOV in again to narrow, narrow has, again, zoom levels one and two. There is only digital zoom with the AT floor, so you don't have the ability to smoothly zoom in and out. And I'm just gonna switch this to automatic. There we go. So that is pretty much all the functionality of the pod. Uh, and actually, just to demonstrate firing the laser, uh, if, I, if I box this trigger and I push and hold the gun trigger, there you go, you get LT slash R flashing, and the box in the center of the display flashes as well, just to confirm that you're currently manually firing the laser. Although in most cases, you're probably going to want to leave that on automatic. So, I hope that you all enjoyed that. That's the basic operation of the AT Fleur pod in air to ground mode. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. And I'll see you all next time.